how much my empress may say with a simple movement of her head. A tilt to the right, she accepts your first line, but wonders if the second will complete the thought with elegance. A tilt to the left, is the comb in your hair entirely suitable? A small, slow backward lift until her eyes look down on you. You must be careful now, careful and clever. And when Her Majesty's head is completely still, motionless, silent, majestic. You dare to come into His Majesty's room? Forgive me, Majesty, the policeman. You canary. He attacked me. Our most loyal officer. Attacked you? He, he was about to. The way he spoke, moved. I panicked, I ran. And now you kneel before us like a frightened girl. My Highness. Before the point of a Kambai sword. My Highness. Perhaps we should put away the sword. Teishi. I do not command. I do not forbid. I ask. Please, Teishi. Will you sheathe the sword? Thank you. My Highness. Now, Azume. She has slipped away. I didn't see her move. She is adept at slipping away. Like a ghost. Here. What is it? What's wrong? A wolf. I saw a wolf. Calm down now. I saw it. How did it snarl at me? Where? I could smell it. In one of the gardens? No, no, no. Here, inside the palace. A wolf inside the palace. Calm now. The guardsman. If one is inside... There is no if. I saw it. It will be dead by now. A smell. I caught a trace of that smell once. On Ozume's hair. Even after she'd been washed, it was still there. Shonagon. It was her. No. It happens, you canary. There are too many stories for it not to be true. Possible. I saw a wolf, and it smelled like Uzume. She is monstrous. She may be, but she's human. She's a trickster and a liar and in love with mischief. I must go to her majesty. She is not a reborn goddess, and she cannot turn into a wolf. Either Uzume disguised as a wolf, or Uzume and a wolf. I must go. She did guess about our dream. Yes. You dreamed a voice, and in the morning you met me. It was my voice. She knew there was something like that between us. Witchery. A guess. The Emperor had said something about a ghost, and she made a... But, Sonagon, the dream was real. I must go. No, wait. Let me go. What's been happening here? You know what's been happening. Before Uzume even got here... I sensed it the minute I stepped through the gate, like a taste of iron in my mouth, as if the very air might flicker like lightning. Have you gone mad? I did that years ago, the morning after your dream. And the years are passing. It's what they do. They're passing for us. If we're ever going to be together... Impossible. Well, because I'm a policeman and you're Her Majesty's lady. But I'm Yukonare. You're Shonagon. And if this place falls... Fools. Years pass. Even palaces fall. You are mad. You may be left without a home. Leave here now, with me, before it's too late. I would sleep under a tree if it would serve my empress. She is my home. Your Majesty. Your devotion to me is precious, Lady Shonagon. But must it be expressed so vehemently? Your Majesty, I beg your forgiveness. Lieutenant, you may release my lady's hand. Your Majesty. Where is Uzume? We don't know, Your Majesty. She slipped away from us, quick as a ghost. Your Majesty, I saw a wolf in... And with her cunning and shrewdness, she could be anywhere. We know she can survive in the wild. Lieutenant, all your men must be on watch for her. Your Majesty? She did tell me that a little further into the cave where she was found, she has a place of some comfort, she said, a shelter. Ah, her den. Lieutenant, gather a good force of your people. I will summon my guardsmen. Your Majesty... Lieutenant? Oh, yes. I picked it up on impulse and it is so strangely pleasing to hold. Don't worry. It is harmless enough in its scabbard.
Your Majesty, please, I beg you. You beg what, Uzume? Forgiveness, Majesty. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. If I said things, I shouldn't. If I told lies, sometimes I don't know I'm telling them. Your faulty memory confuses you. Yes, and I start to babble. Things come into my head. Ideas, stories, maybe even things I really remember. Half remember, think I remember. You're babbling now. Yukinari, keep an eye on the wolves. If you think we should withdraw. They seem calm enough, but we might be better... And you, Shonagon, are you calm enough? Yes, Your Majesty. I do long to sit down, but... So, Uzume, you meant no harm and you beg forgiveness. Please, Your Majesty. I'll go away. Far away. I beg in the name of Lady Quanon. Oh, that remarkable knowledge of yours. You hear that, Shonagon? Quanon, goddess of mercy. You transformed herself into a deer so that a starving man might eat her flesh. Sacrifice. To earn her mercy, Uzume, you must be truly penitent. There must be sacrifice. Ask me anything, Majesty, anything. You will go far away. Yes. You will walk the long road of penitence. Yes. No more lying, no more trickery. You will carry a begging bowl. Do you have such a thing back there in your den? We can have a servant fetch one from the temple. I do have a bowl. And a staff. You must have a staff. Can you imagine, Shonagon, our Zume here with begging bowl and staff? Your Majesty, I do sense unease. We are none of us at ease, Lieutenant. The animals. Maybe we should take the girl out of here. Back to the palace, Your Majesty. Where we can all sit down and converse at our ease. No, this creature will never enter my palace again. No, never. I'll go away. And the wolves don't seem too restless. They seem fascinated, even amused. You think they do have a sense of humour, Lieutenant? Yes. They grin at the foolishness of men and women. Majesty, in the name of Lady Quanon, may you, blessed by Amaterasu... Quiet. These names are like blasphemy on your lips. I'll go. I'll beg. I'll hunt. I'll keep to the woods and the hills and I'll never come back. And your tears are lies. No, Majesty, no. Here is another blessed name. Majesty, no. Come by. Your Majesty, please. Do you know that name? Come by. A man who made blades that are miracles of lightness and balance and keenness. You say nothing. One would think you might tell us Kambai's life story and elucidate his forging methods, you who know so much. But there is much you do not know. What it means, for instance, to be an empress. Majesty brings many trials. An empress's most loyal officer... He may urge an empress's lady to abandon her. Majesty, I would never... One day, Shonagon, you may have no choice. I may have no choice. You see, Azume, an emperor may take a new empress. Or he may forsake his own majesty. He may enter a monastery, devote all his thought to the teaching of the Buddha. He may lose himself in the hills and woods study butterflies, wolves. My own highness played with that idea once. He fled the palace, truly he did. Oh, it was a while ago. He wasn't much more than a boy. Majesty, I beg you, is this not... Indiscreet. We are beyond such things in this place. We are among the wolves now, Shonagon. Yes, not much more than a boy. But he was an emperor, and he wandered the land like a vagabond. He even wore a vagabond's clothes. Retreat to the country, monastery, or new empress. What happens to the old empress then? She may not be old at all. She may be young and vital still. Must she spend the rest of her life in small gardens and tiny, uninteresting rooms? She may have to learn to fill her days by reading poems and folding paper into birds and flowers. Such pastimes are lovely, of course. Are they not, Shonagon? Yes, Your Majesty. For an hour or two, but a lifetime. Of course. She can always take lovers or become a nun. She may lose a companion as dear and devoted as my Shonagon. Majesty. I know, you would sleep under a tree to serve me. But under the roof of a nunnery? Gladly. Look at this roof. How it shines. And the walls... A million shining diamonds. But they're not diamonds, are they, Lieutenant? No. Soft crystal. 
fragile crystal. They crumble at a touch. But they are a treasure. We must protect them from any threat. Even a palace may crumble and fall. The girl is no threat, Your Majesty. Leave her to me. Well, she does kneel here like a penitent child. Do you agree, Shonagon? No threat. Oh, I think you do need to sit down. The air in here, Your Majesty, the smell. Yes. I can have her taken so far away she'll never find her way back. Your Majesty? That smell. We should go out of here. My mind is not at ease. My soul. Majesty. Look at me, Izumi. Look up. Say something, not to Quanon or to Amaterasu. To me. To Teishi and Kambai. Say something. I know you think it will ease your soul to kill me. I know so much. Too much. And so very much will crumble and fall. Kambai! No! no! Things that the head of Azumi appears to say to me. It says, See me soar and spin pale as a skull. See the rippling trail of blood I leave behind. See me pale and turning and turning dark, changing. See the cave shadows take me and darken me more. See me grey as muzzle and rough, dark as black fur and grinning like a wolf. The Pillow Book was inspired by the diaries of Say Shonagon and written by Robert Forrest. Shonagon was played by Ruth Gemmel, Yukinari by, by Cal McIninch, Uzume by Jessica Hardwick, The Emperor by Paul Reddy and The Empress by Laura Rees. It was directed by Lou Kemp and The Pillow Book was a BBC Scotland production for BBC Radio 4.